Y'all used to hate on all of my moves, but now niggas on it. Y'all used to bait me on me and my views, but now niggas on it. I used to tell them I had me a show, but now niggas on it. Her homies on it. Your homies on it. Y'all used to hate on all of my moves, but now niggas on it. Y'all used to bait me on me and my views, but now niggas on it. I used to tell them I had me a show, but now niggas on it. Her homies on it. Your homies on it. What up, what up? We back, the Realest Podcast ever. We here on location, um, somewhere in, I don't know what they call this area now. I guess it's still Northern Liberties uh, at this point. I, yeah. They change the designation of these neighborhoods like every eight weeks now at this point. Yeah, the point. traffic pattern is totally different. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's, it's... I used to hang out down here when they was first gentrifying this area back in like 2006, 2007. Oh, he was a crack yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um my, my, my cousins had a store over on 2nd Street made to order um which is across the street from um Circles, the Thai restaurant I don't or whatever. Know if Circles is the, is the truth. I yeah. don't know if it's still like that, but 2nd and Spring Garden, you could Oh, you could get your issue. You could get your whole issue. Yeah. That little underpass for yeah. that. Yeah, it go down over there. Because that's like the last stop before Yeah. You completely go to like Thriller Land yeah. like before you turn into a Michael Jackson video. Yeah, straight up. Uh, today's guests we have here on location with us are two young ladies who are staunch TRPE supporters and represent the best of the best in the arts and entertainment field coming from the Philly region. In addition to their talents in front of the mic, they are both extremely skilled behind the scenes as well, self-producing and marketing their own event series and doing quality control for all the events they are a part of. The former is a multifaceted poet, writer, vocalist, and entrepreneur whose 2023 book release event was one of the absolute best we attended all year. And the latter also shares the titles of entrepreneur, poet, and writer while having a distinction of self-publishing her own children's book and being recently featured on the stage at the annual South by Southwest Festival in Austin, Texas. One is a returning guest. The other is here for the first time. TRPE Nation, give it up for two of the headliners from our 2023 Holiday Hangover show, Ryan V. Bryant and Steph Ox. That was amazing, Chad. I love it. Yeah, 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 yeah. the, the, the V is for Violet. Violet. Yes. I would have never guessed it's that. For mom. as long as so I've known my you. My mom gave me her middle. So my mom is Diane Violet. And ah. Violet. They, the women do that in my family, too. All yeah. of the women in my family, middle name is Marie. Oh, don't get me started. You know, because <laughs> me and Steph, bro, the, the middle name goes from the older down to the son, and then it, it stays there for two, and then you pick a new name. So it was uh. like Earl, Willie, Kane, then Willie Earl Kane, Senior Willie Earl Kane Jr. Willie Earl Kane Jr. had my grandfather. He named him Walter. Willie goes to the middle name. Walter Willie Kane. Then he had my dad, Walter Willie yeah. Kane Got Jr. <laughs> Willie goes, they move Walter to the middle name. Now I'm Matthew Walter Kane. So when I have a son, he's supposed to be Matthew Walter Kane Jr. I'm like, I'm naming my son Hassan. What y'all talking about? <laughs> like I was about that shit. Yeah, no, Kimba. No. Like, seriously, it's the, it's the I used to be embarrassed by that shit growing up because it wasn't the typical <laughs> black girl. So I used to make up shit. They like, what's Visa? I'd be like, Vanika. <laughs> <laughs> I would have guessed <laughs> Vanessa, Vivica, yeah, all kinds of shit. Like, like it's, I remember a shout out Drew over at my job dispatcher. He was like, Matthew W. Kane. What does the W stand for? I was like, Walter. Walter. He's like, Matthew <laughs> Walter Kane? That's a name right there, boy. Like, that was straight up. Like, I hated my middle right. name for Got years. You. I hate Damn pussy footing around. Let's just let's just get it right. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they the 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 men in my family on my dad's side they do the same thing. So all of them names are Allen Robert Ward or Robert Allen Ward, and it's like the third. The, it was like yeah. it's ninety two of y'all. Stop yeah. this. Yeah. Stop doing this. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, I, I I used to hate our names growing up, but now it's Dang. like you know it's yeah. part of the culture. I, like I was just saying on Twitter the other day like how I, I'm from that segment where everybody na- gave their daughters the middle name Renee. So many people from the 88 to like 92 have the Renee as a middle name. Yeah, it's a lot of those. (laughs) I think it's just parents pass it down, but what it is is you never know what's going on at that time. Like when Aaliyah died, so many people was named Aaliyah. Mm -hmm. That's like the the Nevaeh wave. The the Nevaeh wave was I remember I was like, what the hell is Nevaeh? And she was like, it's heaven backwards. I was like, no it's not. No it's not. <laughs> hey, I remember when I found out Samaj was James backwards. That oh, blew my mind. A lottery ticket. I had, yeah. No, just in the shit. We was like, oh, my name Samaj. It was like, where did your mom co- even come up with that? It was like my my uncle named James got killed. I'm like, where did she come up with that? He's like, it's James backwards. I'm like, 
name's Yeah, niggas get real creative with these names, man. The funny is when you meet somebody that has like a, a real ethnic name and they middle name, like she said, be something real like old. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like the, the you meet somebody and their name is like, you know, Khadijah, and then the middle name is like May. Yeah, May. <laughs> yeah, Khadijah May <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, yeah. oh shit! I don't even know how we started with that. <laughs> N- <laughs> hashtag name waves. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think the best way to start is. Uh, for both of y'all to give the audience a quick bio, some background information on y'all. You haven't been here before, but people know who you are. You have been here before, but it's been a very, very long time. That's where you want to show where you want to show once or twice? Once. Once. Right? It was 2017. Oh, that was the first season. Yeah. yeah. My goodness. It's <laughs> yeah. a long we time ago. Northeast yeah. Space. That wasn't even a Northeast. That's Feasterville. Yeah, that was yeah, Trevo. Yeah, yeah, Trevo. <laughs> Yeah, we was borderline. We was drug addicts <laughs> on that one. Yeah, that's funny as hell. You was with uh, Nikki. Yes. Yeah, shout yes. out Nikki. Yeah, yeah. All right, so whoever want to go first, it's on y'all. Let you go first. So go ahead, ask the question again. Oh, um, oh, give the audience a, a quick bio, some background info, who you are, you know, why, why the hell should we have you as a guest? Like, <laughs> let's substantiate which is, which, why you're here. Me and Matt talk so many times about me coming up here, and I'm like, I respect y'all so much that I want to make sure that when I come up here, I have something substantial. Well, well you're the only one. <laughs> because yeah, because ma- up, mad you're homeless right, niggas want to come up. Well, I, I respect y'all. I look at I'm like, no, man, right. wait till I got the next Pulitzer comments or the next Niggas book. all day. Now I got some shit to say, bro. You gotta have me on it. Oh, you gotta have me on it. I gotta put these holes in a place. <laughs> well, you don't have a place. You don't have a place. So there's oh, that. Yeah, man. <laughs> but That's hilarious. My name is Steph Ox. I am a multifaceted ar- uh, artist as well. I, you know, I've, I used to battle rap, but now I do a lot of poetry. <laughs> <laughs> man, Did you have a diss I say this. No, she used to write raps <laughs> in my crib. <laughs> like, <laughs> on his steps. Like, yeah. Second but, Amendment. Um, the crazy thing is, <laughs> yeah. I stopped battling, battle rapping because I realized that I'm like too sensitive for it. Because I beat a girl inside of a like battle rap, and you could shout out to Kalen from the office because you know he already knew. But um, I beat a girl, and she wound up like tearing up, and I just felt so bad. I like apologized to her, and, and you ain't had I'm a like, stomach for this, this battle rap. I'm like, they, they don't cry. Like on these head bars shots. ain't got no shoes to them. <laughs> 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 it's yeah. hot fire. I got <laughs> fucking people up. But you know, now I you know I write children's, but everything. I do is centered around language whether it's the children's books whether I'm on stage whether it's speaking um writing articles I have proofread wrote resumes for people I've done like pretty much everything circled around just storytelling writing artistry I feel like with me trying to do so much I wanted to find I feel like the I'm more so good in the entertainment field if that makes sense like I, I can do all of the other stuff like I'm you know smart enough to do a lot of stuff but for the most part, to entertain. And I want to be able to story tell and have people no matter the audience. So I have like, I recently, what was that, two days ago, was just having breakfast with a bunch of kindergartens and first graders, just storytelling through all my stories and they jo- enjoyed it. Uh, last month, it was a bunch of high school boys and just talking about like the gun violence in the city. And then, you know, you guys see me perform all the time. And I think that what I've learned is that if you know how to talk to your audience, you can reach your audience. So right. That's, that's everything. True. I know I don't know if I answered your question. But <laughs> no, you did. Around yeah, everything. No. That I do. Ryan, yep. Yeah. So, um, my name is Ryan B. Bryan. I am a poet, spoken word artist, two time self published author, nurse, entrepreneur, former podcaster. I feel like very well rounded in this entertainment world. I've been in the entertainment world for a very long time. Um, this is a full circle moment for me being back on TRP because, like, we started what well, that was seven years ago. Yeah. You guys are about to celebrate your seventh year in the business and we started when we were like very early on in the mm-hmm. business and like chad was on my podcast when i had it yeah, i was on like one of your first like 10 shows right yeah it was like that was when you did roswell you know, i was doing roswell okay. at that time and um chad came up there with the ybod movement <laughs> set shit <laughs> off <laughs> but um yeah as a poet you know i'm very new to the poetry world i could say like within the last four or five years you know just getting out there first was my book and then i started branching off into performing singer like i've been in a singer since forever in church, learning sheet music, playing instruments in the church and school. So bringing that all together with my poetry and my art was been my main focus is like connecting those two different worlds. So like, how could I incorporate all of my life into what I truly like to do, which is my passion is writing and getting that across to the people. Um, yeah. So that's, it's kind of like me in a nutshell. Y'all some talkers. I, I like that. 
normally you have people come up and just like, nah, nah motherfucking nah. I'm so yeah. y'all. Like, you know, I feel like I'm missing stuff and I'm gonna leave and be like, I'm just trying to like in real time, yeah. like, damn, am I missing anything? But I, yeah. I already feel like I'm I'm gonna go home and be like, damn, That's I should have told y'all I'd do this. Let <laughs> me ask you this for both of y'all. When did you realize you had like a passion for writing? Because me personally, I'm not a writer and I never was a writer ever. You know, I I, I hate writing stuff that like taking notes in school was nothing for me. It's just like I'm going to just remember that. English was always my favorite subject. Yeah, see, me, it was math. I hated I hated, English. I hated literally all of that. I like, dreaded it in nursing school. I'm like, this is going to be the death of me in here. But, yeah, writing has always <laughs> been my favorite. Yeah, like, writing has always been my favorite subject. I think I was more so in my head about the perception of people or how they would receive what I was writing because it's just like, they don't want to hear what I have to talk about. Like, these are my intrusive, deep thoughts. Like, nobody could possibly relate. And even into, like, my recent years, it's just like putting a book out there is, like, a big thing. Because you're like putting your vulnerable moments, feelings, and observations out there for people to judge yeah. or relate to. So it's kind of like letting go of that uh, that notion of people pleasing and like caring about what people think about your art and it's just doing it for you. And after you get your first time where somebody like pulls you to the side or writes you, say, hey, what you wrote like really resonated or it helped me through this. It made me realize this or made me feel more sensual about whatever. And you're just like, damn, people really care about what I had to say. Let me do more of this because... Just because I think that nobody wants to hear it, somebody does need to hear it. Right. And that's how you know you get over that. Yeah, I know for you, it was like... you. you it I, just, I was very introverted yeah, and right. quiet to the point where you're like, do you talk? Like, <laughs> and, I, and I think for writing was my way of expressing myself. So whether it be... That's why I'm able to do so many different things, whether it's the comedy stuff or whatever, because I'm able to just channel myself, feel like I'm being my real self when I'm writing. And then when I've gotten to the, start performing and having people be like, oh, I relate to this or I feel this or you made me see this about myself, I think that built my confidence up to want to keep doing it. Like, were y'all note writers in school? Oh, I hate notes. I love notes. I hate no, no, notes. I don't mean, like, taking notes. I mean, like, oh. sending. Remember women would send detailed notes to you, like, Oh, yeah, I was, a, I was heavy love letter drawing. Yeah, I wasn't a love letter <laughs> boy at all. I, like, I used to, like, write love letter, put in somebody's locker, like, yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I do, like, I, like, I did write, like, like, love letters, but nothing like <laughs> I, I remember years ago, this girl was trying to sex with me, and I'm like, I don't know what this is. <laughs> and Drew was like, give me a phone, I got you. And he turned into Shakespeare. And I was just like, all right, Kendrick Lamar. Like, like, yeah, I was never a writer. I was I just, heavy love letter drawing, like, ooh. in high school. Heavy love letter drawing. I remember getting a letter and just feeling like, and this whole is way too deep <laughs> for me. Like, this is too it much. It's always easier for me to pen as it for me to Speak verbalize. It, yes. my I agree with that. Complete opposite. And that's why I admire people who, when I see a book full of stuff like him, he's a writer. Mm -hmm. So when I see these detailed breakdowns, and I just be like, I ain't got no time, no friends. I, I I don't understand it at all. So I always <laughs> admit, seriously, I admire people who can write and really, really detail thoughts in write. That's that's difficult to do. Yeah, I unlocked my writing gift way later in life, probably compared to y'all. I didn't really start um, becoming good and structurally with my writing until I was probably like. A senior in high school, freshman in um, oh, you know, in good. college. You can't even tell. Chad, it sounds like you've been doing something it's this all Chad your life. Chad is such like, a scholar. Yeah. Between oh the intros, you know, like you really do North do East a form central. of central. Northeast the Central. Yeah. <laughs> Bitter rivals. But yeah, I, did, I, I, I figured out how, you know, I, I could express myself through writing, but I wasn't like structurally good. Like I would almost like write how I speak or whatever like that. And then, you know, you start, I took an AP English class my senior year of uh, high school. And then I took a lit class my freshman year and my literature professor was like you're very very good but it's like raw we need to hone this in and then she showed me how to like structurally make it make sense where to end your thoughts at where to begin a new thought how to tie it all it back shows, together in the end yeah, yeah. and then from there i was I, like pretty I, much I, good i respect it and i i was always the complete opposite where it's like i can illustrate a vision talking better than most people yeah but if i gotta write this down <laughs> it's, it's over That's a talent f's in the chat yeah right. i tried to uh yeah. you know everybody of course young black people all try to rap like you say yeah, try yeah. to rap and do music and whatever and i remember like having this thought of being a rapper like i have personality i'm funny and i remember i wrote like three or four pages of raps and it was just like it got worse and worse <laughs> as I went how down. am i declining <laughs> in quality <laughs> I didn't even drop my first show yet. And I'm falling off. Like, this is, this is, this is like, so that people who are able to like really, really paint mm 
mm-hmm. portraits yeah. with their that, I will I, give credit to my senior year English teacher Mr. Richardson from Northeast he made us do recitations mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. that was like our form of like public speaking class yeah and we had to like memorize the Gettysburg Address um, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate and shit like that mm-hmm. and we would compete against each other in class like and we had to like have very strict diction. So we said at you, he would make like a sneeze face. I definitely think that matters. Like yeah, you're teaching does. your foundation. Absolutely. I, you know, I went to Saul and it was just like our English teacher, Mr. Garibal, was just like, uh, what was it? What was when you be quiet, silent, sustain, reading 25 minutes, read. <laughs> it's just like, you know, they don't, they don't care. You got to get them horses. Like, yeah. That's just reality. So we weren't focused on any of that, but I, I, I meet people, <laughs> I meet people who did AP lit and all of these different advanced classes. Mm-hmm. And you, you can really see it in the way they're able to like pen the paper. It's fucking and phenomenal. When did you start singing? You said in church In church. Like at what age? So I'll, I'll push it back further than that. So we used to have talent shows, of course, like elementary school. So I've always been into music since a kid, right. like my mom said, I used to sing Johnny Gill, my, 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 like in the backseat, like what the hell? Like, but talents like shows in school, but we joined the church when I was 10 and the music director took me to a musical convention. It was called the national gospel, national convention of gospel choirs and choruses. So I was 12 years old at the time I was playing the drums for the church. I was playing the drum set, the drum kit. And he was like, you know, I want you to come to this convention with me. That convention, like we come together, like all like this country, all cities form choirs according to your age group and you learn like sheet music for like four days and you perform it on like the fifth day and then you know you celebrate after that but it's all church stuff but we were learning sheet music so young so like that kind of helped me recognize tone recognize sound like how to harmonize and things like that so that's melodies started, and top lines yeah, like, and- so like if i hear somebody singing something i could easily like hop in on because i'm an alto of course but I could easily hop in because that's how I was trained. Like, even when it comes to playing music, like music on the drums, I could pick up. I know how to read sheet music. But that started when I was like 12 <laughs> years old. But a lot of people don't know that about me. It's not something I really go around talking about. But like, that you sing? That I sing or that I play instruments? I, I'm not going to lie. I, I knew you sung because I'd seen like a clip of you singing before at like. Uh, what rents do? Not them. The the oh. like uh it was like you doing what they call me like a karaoke type oh, thing. Okay. <laughs> and I, I saw that and I was like, oh she can sing a little bit. So when we came to your show, mm-hmm. I wasn't ready for like that like the harmony. Yeah, like yeah. Yeah. she's about to climb on the piano. Like when the cabaret singers, <laughs> like this is yeah. crazy. Like I wasn't ready for that. It was just like that oh, was, was that, that was, was so time. fun for me to be able to combine like my world of music poetry together because like I said not many people know that about me so like just like y'all were like what the fuck like yeah I was blown away I was just like wait what like I didn't yeah. I didn't know what was going on I, I literally I, I it was it was a, it was a lot going on that right. day you know we don't get in that but it was a lot going on <laughs> and I, I kind of was just like not really knowing what to expect so I see the band I see the DJ I'm just like all right, was and then then the way it all flowed, I'm like, oh, this is. I'm like, we gotta step our shit up, man. We gotta, yeah. we gotta, we gotta start performing. That was so fun to put together, just because, like I said, I knew it was gonna be like a shock factor, but also just to give people an experience. Like poetry doesn't have to be one way. Like Steph and I always say, it's not a monolith, so it doesn't have to follow like the same regime, you know, to be considered poetry. But to also add that instrumental background, I think it just gives more feeling. And so it opens her, and, her up to more audiences. Right, right. Are y'all fans of where the poetry world is right now? Yes and no. I can agree with that. I yes feel no. like that's it, just me looking at it from the but outside. But I also know the poetry world is bigger than Philly. And I know that if you, if because I have a goal and because I have an end game, I can't take, you know, I can't let certain things, you know what I mean, cause me to not move or whatever. Same thing. Y'all pretty much go through yeah. it in y'all's yeah. situation. I think too. that's what like something I had to overcome myself is not getting too attached, emotionally attached to the perspective and the environment of where Philly poetry scene is at this point. Because I think coming into the Philly poetry scene, it was like thinking it would be different than the rap scene, the mm-hmm. you know, party scene. Cause you experience that and you see like, Oh, people backbiting each other, like being hitters. I'm pretty sure you guys have experienced it in your tenure. Oh, like, you in Philly, if you, I got yeah. podcast yeah. PTSD yeah. at this yeah, point. I, I if you selling it. apples and somebody's <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. being in like the party promotion scene, like I know he's experienced this a lot, but I thought, 
going into poetry, I'm like, this is all kumbaya. Like you said, get a kango, little kufi. This yeah. is all peace. And like, you get into these rooms. <laughs> you see I put like, my kango on for nothing. <laughs> all right. You think yeah. it's all peace, but you get into these Got my these backpack, rooms. my chew stick. <laughs> Hello. I'm <laughs> ready. <laughs> my chew stick, stick. got my, my turban, my incense, and Yo. you know, my crystals. Which, uh, man, yeah. I'm talking about my crystals. <laughs> Rock on the porch, on the charger. Like, this is great. <laughs> just, just, I guess just to put a pin on what she said is I think <laughs> that a lot of times people don't know that especially with poetry you can find your audience what and but and i think that a lot of times people when you get into these spaces it feels like they're being judgmental or they're measuring you up against something that you you know what right I mean? so that's what you that's when we say yes and no it's like obviously it's yeah. going to build us to a certain point but i was talking to a friend um last tuesday and i was just you know talking about like my goals over the next year and how I had to overcome like that personal attachment to just not being satisfied with where the Philly poetry scene is because I love my city. I love Philly to death, but it was just like, sometimes I'm withdrawn because I don't want to be around certain energy because it brings me down. And she was like, you know, you have to realize like you will get hurt whenever you're in this entertainment business. But at the end of the day, you're strong enough to withstand that pain. And that's what you're here for. Like you got tough skin, you can handle it. So I was like, yeah, it makes sense. But everybody goes through that. It's not just poetry. Like, it's everyone that goes through that in the city. And I feel like you travel outside of Philly, you get so much love. Yeah, I was going to ask Shit. you, how different um, is, like, the creative community here versus in, you know, other places? Texas y'all can, y'all can favorite, pick a place. We went like. to Texas last <laughs> year. Texas is my favorite place. Steph headlined uh, Wine Poetry last October, and I accompanied her on that journey. And it was phenomenal. Like, everyone embraced us. Like, yeah, me and you talked about it. You was telling me how Texas is just another Austin level. Austin was the first time I performed in Texas. And when I tell you, they were getting up and this and that. And like, I didn't have merch to sell, but I promoted everybody else and they all sold out. And I'm just like, fuck, I'm dropping a bag. That's like, the opportunity. Yeah, I'm just mm -hmm. like, Ugh, but whatever. You but it know. also lets you know, they just, well, they passed around a tip jar while yeah. I was in the middle of performing. Yeah. And they just like, oh, here's some tip. I like we left with tip. Get that little send well around. <laughs> I feel like there's a shift in energy because we performed in New York a couple of times and like I'm performing in New York this uh, Friday in Brooklyn is just like the way they embrace you and just reach out to you like the open mics I host every month is somebody I met in the pandemic virtually from New York. And it was just like they just welcomed me. Yeah, like, he oh, always on. references how New York just supports. Just they do. New Yorkers that give you a fair shot. They'll go to anything. We New Yorkers. Sold, yeah, we sold out a true. show in in Brooklyn, yeah. and it yeah, was well, like was people in there that was just like, I've never seen this person yeah. before. You're like, hey, good good looking family. Yeah. 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 Great show, man. And it was a pack first time yeah. listener. Yeah. I'm like, wait, what? First time listener. Somebody saying that at a live show. Like, all right, yeah. <laughs> whatever. Yeah. It's just the mentality that we have in a city, and it's just like I think you know it takes a mature person to get out of that because like stuff has one of her bars on her phones like you know you can't show you no love it'll be seen as dicky and yeah. and we have that strict mentality like we can't show our fellow sister or our fellow brother like yo i really fuck with what you got going on and it, i don't want anything from it i just want to show you love but right we are not allowed to do that once you space. already make it or something yeah like, like once you make sure. it it's like yo bro like and in a, in a weird way like being on the outside looking into the spoken word poetry community i think i always viewed it as like you say like kumbaya Mm -hmm. They got their chew sticks, you know. Chew sticks is killing. Yeah, lava lamps <laughs> and just, yeah, like they over there chilling. So to see it and find out that it's like, no, nah, it's just as murky as anything else. Yeah, and it's real treacherous yeah. and people are doing nonsense. It's yes. just like, well, that's, that's what, what Kanye told told us on Death Poetry Jam. Like I thought it was Kanye like all peace and, you know, kumbaya. But you know who did tell us that on, on Death, Com Death Poetry Jam? DMX. DMX on his, on his poem called the yeah. Industry. Damn, right? I forgot about that. On the, the industry, X might have been like our like the hip hop gateway yeah. into that spoken word. Thing. I watched that performance a lot because it's so true. It's just like that was like real prophetic of him, like to be able yeah. to foresee that because it's the truth. Like you get in, you die to get into this industry, and you want to do so well in it. You want to succeed. You want people to appreciate your art that you're putting out there, and just like. Sometimes it breaks you down to the point where you just second guess yourself and second guess your God given talent. Yeah. Like, am I not good? Am I worthy of being able to put forth this like raw energy so that you guys can like consume it and enjoy it? Because it'll make you feel like this small. Like, Steph, I don't know how many times I went to her, like, yo, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. Like, it's 
feeling like I'm compromising my integrity and compromising my morals because I don't want to be around these type of people. And she was like, you know, just focus on the end goal, like focus on where you want to go. So that's basically what I had to keep telling myself, like, there's an end goal and there's somebody out here that needs to hear what I had to say. Mm -hmm. And I know what I had to say is important and is valid. Mm. And when we get when we went to Scranton, so many people were coming up the ride at the end. Like girl was in tears. Yeah. So is and I'm like, this is these moments. Like it don't matter these, you know. And that's right. like Scranton, of course. Yeah. And a lot, a lot of times, man, w whatever you're doing, especially when you're in creative spaces, you just got to rise above your circumstances and the immediacy of where you are, who you're surrounded by, and what it is that you're doing. And like you said, focus on the end goal because once you transcend. Where you, the where you're from part of it, then you have these breakthrough moments where you like, oh damn, this is really impacting people. Right. People really care. People are really invested in like this. Everybody's not like these crazy motherfuckers right. where I'm from. You know right. what I'm saying? That do everything right. counter to just being a good person and just wanting to be, you know, supportive and let yeah. people know that you respect their craft right. and what the hell they doing. I feel like the crazy thing about my journey personally is me showing love for to people just unwarranted and not expecting not anything expecting. back is how I've gotten majority of my poetry blessings. And I, that's honest to God. That's Coming from Pastor Carl, shout out to Pastor Carl. He helped me get my first viral poetry moment with the Van Jones podcast. Um, right, right, right. With the Where I'm From Where I'm poem, from. You know right. And then uh, recently with the Department of Treasury, a fellow podcast, we was on the same radio station and he works for them. And that's how I got that blessing. So it's just like being a good person really puts you in so many different realms of just experiencing all your blessings and you don't do it just because you're like, Oh, they're going to, if I scratch their back, they're going to scratch my later on down. Like, just be a good person. Yeah. Uh, I want to speak to a couple of things that y'all have done. You just brought up you doing the department of treasury. How was that? And what was that for? So it was for their 40th annual black history month luncheon. Okay. And, um, this year was focused on African Americans and the arts. So shout out to Joey Bada, bootcut boss. <laughs> he um Twitter asked, legend. Yeah, Twitter legend. He um, like I said, we were podcast mates. We were both on Soundwaves Radio back in the day. And he asked me like three months ago, like, hey, you know, they're doing a luncheon at my job. For, like, make sure it's government friendly. I told him I knew somebody that could come. So I didn't know it, to what magnitude it was gonna be. Mm -hmm. I just think I'm doing like a favor for a friend. Yeah. And you know, I wrote I had to do a speech and then I had to do a poem. So I wrote a speech. Shout out to C. <laughs> I don't know if you got, you know who C is, right? And if I see you on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Clarence. So, That's my yeah, homie. Clarence. So yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so, that nigga, <laughs> nigga, your name Clarence. Yeah. You know J Money Joshua. <laughs> yeah, C, 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 is, C is one of those people that um number one he's he's in arts and entertainment he's worked with and for bt for a number yeah. of years curating the bt hip-hop awards bt actual awards various like art installations and stuff like that he put our guy kelso who was part of holiday hangover in that world of you know putting his art on a higher level he works with you know foot lockers and all kinds of stuff mm -hmm. like anything that's like around arts and entertainment but more importantly he's somebody that sees and digests a lot of content and always like sees stuff for instance he randomly hit me like a month ago and was like yo random when you was having the rap label, you was like on some West Side Gun shit because you was doing this, that, and you was curating and you had the merch and the, that's crazy. All right, enjoy your day, my nigga, and just like disappears. That's like, the same moment. Yes. And it's, it's just like, all right, back, good looking. You know what I'm saying? And then I respond back and he don't hit me back. But then when he get another thought, then he comes back to you with the next thought. You know what I'm saying? But he's a culture driven yes. person that, is very hip, very forward on everything, and doesn't really miss shit. C is like black. He's like, I'm black, y'all. Like, <laughs> blackity black. Yes. So when I wrote the speech, I was like, C, I just need you to look over this and just let me know if I'm missing anything. I said, feel free to make any, you know, adjustments. It's in like my, not iTunes, but my iPhone notes. Mm -hmm. And C returned it to me the day of, but when I say that shit was black, I was like, yeah. my nigga. Yeah. <laughs> this is exactly what I'm looking for because um, Joey was saying that they had Al Sharpton up there one time. He was like, they specified that it has to be government friendly. He was like, I don't necessarily know what that means. I said, no racism and no profanity. Yeah. Like, that's all it is. So, you know, I get up there and I'm like, I wonder where I'm going. Like, you know, I know it's a government job, but I'm, I'm driving. I get to the gate and it's like a man with like a gun, pulled a gun out. I'm yeah. like, oh, 
Like, where am I at? And he's like, are you, are you supposed to be here? Like, are you checking? I'm like, yeah, I'm the guest speaker for the day. So he checks in with the office. He's like, okay, you can come in. And I'm like, put my, where put my blick on. Yeah, yeah. Put, put the blicky away. Like, where the fuck does Joey It's a friendly out here. Yeah. yeah, I park, I get in there. I got to walk through the metal to take all my stuff. And I'm like, where am I at? And when I got there and, you know, everyone greeted me so, you know, they were so welcoming and hospitable and I get and I see the ASL person and the, and I'm like oh this is a big deal like yeah and I see a U.S. Department of Treasury and I'm like oh my goodness like yeah. it's like live streaming for the people that are working virtually it's like mm-hmm. a big luncheon with comfort soul food and I'm just like a podium up there and I'm looking at Joey like what did you get me into like I yeah. had to do this but it was so profound like it was one of the best moments of like my poetry career and like they took me on a tour in the back so I could see how they print like government checks and stuff. Mm. It was super cool. But just that moment, I think like as being a black woman, it was just so monumental because it was moments like this. Like my ancestor couldn't do anything like this. Yeah. We weren't able to be invited or you considered. Wasn't in the department of nothing. Yeah, yeah, we weren't invited, considered. Cotton department. Yeah, yeah. cotton. Nothing. Like yeah, that was the only department. <laughs> Get on your hands and your knees and pick this cotton. <laughs> But to care about what a black woman had to say regarding black people and the arts and how we bridged that over the last however many years, it was like very important. I'm like, wow. And I think like also like my mom passed. So, you know, Matt knows. And mm-hmm. it's just like, damn, my mom would be so happy. Like, cause she never really got to see that part of my success right. because that was like the height of her uh, diagnosis. Like mm-hmm. when I did get into writing and publishing books. So that was like very important. Like I'm representing, you know, my family, my right. father, my little sister is like looking at me. She's like excited. Like it looks like you at the White House. <laughs> but like, yeah, like this is like I'm like a standard for my family now. So they can look and say, like, look what my aunt, look what my sister, my cousin, you know, yeah. did. Yeah, I was trying to I was trying to scum back her ID to come to the lunch, but it ain't. Yeah, I was so mad. I, was I wanted to I wanted to be at that joint. How the hell are you gonna get in there? I was like, hey, listen. No, nah, that's decent as all. That's cool. Let me ask you, because two things with you. Me and you used to have a talk, and we would always talk about how, you know how you try to plan for something to go. Mm -hmm. And that's like a big thing now in arts and entertainment, where you can see the fluff, and people are trying to go viral and trying to make a scene. And Steph would always say, like, oh, you know, I got this opportunity. I wanted to go like this. And then it don't go like that. And then you just like, all right, well, damn. And then you wound up having, like, the most viral poetry moment we may have ever seen. Unexpected. I looked a mess. Unexpected. That that, that's the funniest. Like, Steph hit me was like, yo, my hair wasn't done. I it wasn't was even like, trying to get on the like, mic. I, came off, I, I just literally came to support and they were like, oh, come on, come on. I'm like, come on. I'm like, I'm like, or maybe they ain't gonna put it up there or whatever. Like that, he posted that video. And you, that first line, what the fuck you checking? What the fuck me is you on? <laughs> and it went yeah. everywhere. Dessert. It's everywhere. the most viewed poem on Instagram. Wow. Mm-hmm. Damn. I could believe it because you was at like seven million something. Yeah. yeah. Pushing eight million views, by the way. Holy shit. That's major. For now. Yeah, yeah. we're going for 10 next it. time. Yeah. <laughs> but now every time I post something with them, people are still viewing that or whatever. Like mm-hmm. that. Yeah, so no. And you so afterwards so, you mm-hmm. wound up headlining Voices in Power. Voices in Yeah, I started headlining. That's where I started uh, that opportunity. So shout out to Voices in Power for that because that collab or opportunity or whatever, them posting that video did allow me not just opportunities with them, but to be able to meet in uh other people as well. But yeah, I was able to headline for them, which is where I have that the pink dress or whatever the case may be, and that's where the gun violence poem that's going on viral on TikTok now right. mm-hmm. came from that. And we all we all pulled we up for that. There. We were there for, oh, the, yeah. for the yeah. We was all there. We, we was out. There. We was acting a fool out there. I that all in the yeah. <laughs> yes, we were. When you started, did you ever see that? No. Like headlining twenty minute sets and stuff no. like, like that. Like that's that that's my venues. biggest thing that makes me that I feel proud about because I'm like, damn, I got actually on my screensaver now, like to be able to do a forty five minute special, and I'm like, damn, if I'm able to do twenty minutes like that. It's nothing to be able to add another 25 minutes. I've never seen a poetry special. So once I'm able to, you know, so if I'm able to, I think all of this, everything is just growing pains, whether all of the good stuff that happens in this journey that we talk about, all of the bad stuff. And it's going to make, I always say it's going to make sense to stay the course. You're so. right. I've never seen a poetry special. I'll be the first one. No. I can mark it here. Have you ever? I've, no. Yeah, I've never no. seen that. No. I've no. seen poetry albums, of course. Like 45 right. minutes. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm also working on an album, which can kind of coincide. I got to get on the album. 
Listen, I already. Can I gotta do the intro and I gotta do the intro. <laughs> <Listen, laughs> <I already, laughs> I've been every time y'all drop something, I've been like screen recording stuff. Like Chad just said something yesterday where he was like, "That I know is a perfect intro for one of the poems," but it, I don't even know if we're gonna use it. But I just just it was where you was like everybody something with the hot hand. Everybody is only as loyal to the hot hand or something like that. But it was like a talking. Perfect, about, we talked about Travis Scott. Running with the uh, oh yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. I gotta save to my phone. I'm like, damn, that's a hot intro. But I got too many from y'all that <laughs> y'all gonna have to be on there. Mm-hmm. I already talked to Chad about yes. talking to him yeah. next month about certain stuff mm-hmm. for an album. So yeah, no, that's cool. Mm-hmm. Oh no, I'm just you know oh, bouncing right. with. The oh group. yeah, but no, I'm sorry. I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't I just start going off. But yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Is there? You just mentioned doing a 45 minute special or doing a poetry special. Period. Yeah. Do y'all have any like things that are like I want to achieve this. This is an astronomical goal. Do you have any of that type I, I of stuff? I want to win a Grammy. Mm. Yeah, but I, only for writing. Like, I don't want to be the face of the... Like, I What's don't the guy be the who wins the Grammys for poetry? J.I.V. J.I.V. I see so he was the right. one that gave John Legend his name. He was on Kanye's, like, mm-hmm. that certain yeah. stuff. Um, so, yeah, he's he's very, very well, well connected. Versed, and uh, guy. his latest album his was ex- executively produced by Robert Glasper. So it's like, he has okay. a lot and of that's connections. My guy. Yo, I ain't gonna hold you. Ever Robert since Breezy said, who the fuck is Robert Glasper? I hear that name four or five times. So all all the time. Time. Let me tell you, I was so upset about that. Because as, like, a musician and someone who, like, truly enjoys J.I.V., Jazz music, he's like responsible for so much, like behind the it scenes. Breezy, like, like I got these Lambos. And I, <laughs> yeah, like, oh, so but hot. I fuck with people who don't have to make so much noise, but they do. Y'all just talked about the, with the Kendrick thing or something like that on yeah. last night. It's like you don't have to make so much noise to. I just saw Robert you know, Glasper. He was here at the City Winery. Just think, this man is like Grammy nominated, Grammy award winner, and still like doing small, intimate touring. Like yeah. to me, that's a luxury of life to be able to be on that type of scale and still can have those type of intimate settings where you're not overwhelmed. It's just like you're still keeping. That's uh, something I think that I, I know personally, I've learned more and more doing this podcast with him and just going now where I don't even. Somebody recently was like, Yeah, man, like you, you one of the, y'all one of the biggest deals in like the arts and entertainment space in Philadelphia. And I'm like, no, we not. No, we not. <laughs> like, no, we not. And he's like, no, nah, really. Like, y'all really are like, y'all podcast seven years, all the accomplishments y'all have, all these different all things the getting honored. From it. Yeah. And I'm just like, we just be we just talking shit. <laughs> That's like imposter syndrome a little bit. And I'm starting to realize more and more, it's like, you really, we kind of look at like Jay-Z and then if you're not that, then you're not a good rapper. And it's yeah. just like, no, nah, there are a gazillion successful rap. Look at Tech Nine. Look at right. you know uh, uh, MF Doom. Like all <laughs> these different everybody. people where you'll never see them with mainstream success. But dudes are like got forty eight songs yeah. that have charted. It just, you you don't really you look at know. somebody like uh, like Currency who came out of That's that blog fire. era, yeah. and you know he was with No Limit with Young Money that didn't work out, and then now he's driving. Cullinans and Bentleys and all of that the same as the artist with yeah. a song that's on the radio every five minutes yeah. and it's like he gets to do whatever he wants at his right. at his leisure that's and at his an leisure. Interesting point. If I could compare how I would want to see my career go from here on out, it would be like a James Fauntleroy mm. currency type of person. Like I can see that to though. be able to yeah, pick and choose when I want to come into the industry, put my music out there, yeah. and then like retrieve back it's and just pen for them. other people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I still get to have the luxury of not being the main face of everything, like getting that type of heat, but also still doing what I love and like having the freedom to do what that's I love. A, that's a great point that you made about somebody like James Fauntleroy because the average listener is not even going to know who that is. Mm-hmm. Right. But I watched um, Russ's interview on Flagrant recently, and he was talking about people in the music industry that are a source, meaning like they are the ones that everybody else gets their sauce from. They right. come in a room and it's like, oh, what are we talking about? Oh, no, that's bullshit. Do, 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 do this. Mm-hmm. And somebody like James Fauntleroy is a source. The guys from 1500 or nothing, they're the them. source. Yes. Um, Sia it was the person that he brung up that, you know, mm-hmm. they had the Chandelier song years ago. Mm-hmm. But then you look through her credits and you like Rihanna, Natasha oh, Bedingfield. This was like, right. oh, OK. It's like she's the one that everybody's drawing inspiration from. There's a young lady. I forget her name, you but she Elijah, just. You got Esther Dean, like people of that nature. Yeah. That, like they're the source for so many creative stories that we know of up front but we don't know that they're the face behind the scenes right. yeah so that's what i like it's just you know being in the room but don't have to be like in the front line of yeah you way. you know you you it's funny because 
he had an argument with somebody on Twitter or one something, and they like <laughs> went daily. You know what I'm saying? It's like, what else? But I get a Tuesday. I, I always get with old Chad Wallen again. I'll be like, all right, whatever. <laughs> keep me posted. I've, you been, know I've been very good telling <laughs> on him to you. Yeah, that. yeah keep me posted. I don't know what to do. I want to say I've been very good the last year. I have not been acting up on the social last media. Year. Yes. Yeah, what did stretch. I do? I've been stretch. on Twitter since 08. No, no, last year, though. Like, <laughs> this 14th <laughs> Twitter? <laughs> this is the one. Twitter, man. I'm on. <laughs> but no, it was like people have this attitude of like, if you're not in front of the masses, then somehow you're not good. You're not successful. Not oh, yeah. You, that was the corny comedian boy that I'm a right. punch in the face. I'm, and I, I'm, and I'm, I, I'm Malik Bazil. I look at like oh, somebody shit. like a currency <laughs> or should I give you one that's on that same level? Slim thug. Yeah. Yes. You know, these type mm-hmm. of people where it's like, I don't know if I want to be Drake. I don't know if I want to put on a... a, a roller skating outfit and have to jump around with all that pyrotechnic shit there and I don't know if I want to do that or have to do that like and you look at somebody like that where you almost can't even exist and it's fucked up but he's really put himself in a position where he he's going to have trouble existing for the rest of his life and you know all the toys and all the things that make up for it but it's like we had to joke me and her was talking about like we were <laughs> We were in Wawa. Have you had the saltines from Wawa? Yes. No. They uh, are phenomenal. I don't know why they're them. good. They are like good. Them. They are all that. <laughs> but I took like two bags of them and walked out of the Wawa. And I'm like, Beyonce can't do this. <laughs> like Beyonce just can't pull up the Wawa and steal right. at two in the morning. It's Anywhere. Just, like really. Like just That's you could really. not. So it's like we have this thing of if you not that, then you ain't shit. Right. But in reality, it's so much dope shit going on. There are so many saxophonists, mm-hmm. drummers, background singers, pianists that you never hear of. Yeah. And you look up and you see house hunters and the dudes, the piano players, they get my budget is 1.3 million. Right. But I, like, right. seriously. The problem is people got a faulty definition of success. Everybody's yes. success is individual to people. So like some people can be successful, like you said, just write it in the background. Some people are successful if they're on screen at one yeah. time and go away for the rest of their life. Chameleon there. I'll talk about him all That's the time. I was just earlier. I was just like, Listen, yeah. I like, they like come back from the or one hit one. He like whatever. Yeah, that's cool. yeah. So what? Yeah, you could call you. I, some I had a meeting at eleven. You know what? Whatever. Little tech meeting. Yeah. Like it's too subjective to put it into like a cookie cutter standard. Mm-hmm. Like this is what success has to be for everyone. Like everyone, like she said, definition is different. One thing I noticed with and it, it happened with both of y'all, and I don't even know if y'all peeped it, but like after you went viral with that thing, I noticed, especially looking at a lot of different poetry situations, where like. People were almost chasing that, like mm-hmm. going after. Oh, yeah, we talked about because you were just like, why is everybody trying? I was like, I don't know. Yeah, because it was like they're trying to get that same shot. We talked about that opener, at Young yeah. Vibes um, when we did. We were on a panel discussion for Young Shout Bob. out Young Shout Bob. out Young Bob. Yeah. Yeah. And happy belated to Young Bob, yeah. too, yeah. is his we birthday recently. We're going to talk about Young Bob because yeah, Young Bob is I, a good he was just dude. He really uh, is. He pulled up like, to the open mic yeah, yesterday. Was, yeah, we're going to have a whole conversation. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, <laughs> we talked about that on our panel discussion, how like people will see something going viral and try to take that exact recipe and mm-hmm. think. Like, at the end of the day, that worked for Steph because it was her time. Everybody, it was just her it time. Was yeah, her. That's it. Time. 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 I always say there's a time and for everything, and it was her time for that to take off for her. Mm-hmm. That doesn't necessarily mean if Jane want to talk about ain't shit niggas tomorrow, that it's going to be her time. The way everything was curated to the audience, to the viewers, to the timing of everything for her just being there in that exact How, time. Yo, it's so... Because I remember I told you, because she at first couldn't understand. Remember it hit like 3.5 yeah, fast. Like, and now I'm like hiding because now I'm, I'm getting... I'm, I'm, like, I'm going to keep it above <laughs> with you. If you were dialed up, hair freshly done, eyelashes, done, it would almost be like the way the people view it is like, oh, this chick there's this complete. bitch, just this light. And with yeah. you almost, it almost made sense for you not having your hair done. It's yeah. almost just like, I look what stressed. the fuck, yeah. man? Like yeah. it, it gave that, a, it, yeah. 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 And it made people gravitate towards it in that manner. So it's like, yeah, you never really know. And I noticed with you, with the show, when you did the, the show for your book, you started seeing events Eerily, I noticed it, and it's I like people start those. randomly just putting effort yeah. into their events. Yeah. 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 But That's this true. is the thing, like, and you know, I hate the. <laughs> it's not that I, I didn't, I wasn't the first person to do it, so mm-hmm. I'm not gonna say it, but. It's not about who, it ain't about who did it first, it's about who did it right. Oh, I'll mm-hmm. say it, like and, the um, poets and comics thing. Yeah. It's the same exact thing. And like, it's, it was just something like I started like peeping, like everybody's like adding instruments. But I get it, it makes it pop, it makes it more interesting. Right. And I have no problem with that because what's in your sauce is not in mine. You can't copy my recipe. 
What's in my seasoning is not going to taste the same as you. Sound like the best Bob Ball. Remember him? <laughs> <laughs> like the sauce. Yeah. That sauce was bad. That was really a good show. Yeah, I, I can't sauce. wait to the next and one. And Steph hosted it. Like, I asked Steph to host that for me because I was just like, you know, you bring an energy. Home. Like, I want you to get the, you know, start it off. And I know she had the bars to do so and the energy to do so. Even when she incorporated, like, the sing-along, getting everyone together and, like, cooperating and having a good time. But... Like I said, whoever copy like you could try to mimic what she's done. Yeah, it's not gonna come. It's not out gonna the work. Same. Yeah, you could try to do what I've done. It's not gonna come out the same because one thing I'm me. Aside from everything that's, I'm still right in. Like people fuck with me because they fuck yeah. with me, mm-hmm. and the same thing goes to stuff. Like so, yeah, those those were two two cool ass events. Your book release and then you headline of Voices of Power, and that made us. You know, I, shout out to Kira too. Cause yeah, I know yeah, Kira's listening. Uh, shout out to Shakira Thornton. Because Kira always gets yeah, it. She shows I, up I, I, to, I she be shows like, Kira's over like 40 too. before she came in. Because she <laughs> gets it cracking for Without jump Kira, street. there would not be situations one or two. Really? Because of the book. Kara is the one like we had mutual friends on social media and it was like one of those things where I just seen she was doing her thing with her novels. Like at that time she was like three times mm-hmm. a, a novelist and I'm just like, I need to connect with this girl. And it's just like, at that point, things like this, you had to put your pride to the side, like all that Joe shit. No, sis, I fuck with what you got going on and I need help. Perfect yeah. alignment though. Look, I need help. And me yeah. and Kara, five years strong, been good friends ever since. Yeah, Kara, I know Kara since for you. I need some tonic. So Kara, get with me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm, I'm, all, tonic. Yeah, I'm all out of tonic. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that's definitely a perfect example of just, just being a good person, like, and just reaching out. Like if you honor or love something that somebody's doing, just, Talk to them. Have a conversation with them. Yeah, I don't know why that's so hard in this city. Like, it's, it's damn near impossible. <laughs> Real quick for we segment, because I have a very specific question I want to ask y'all about some event stuff. But Atia Boggs is the young lady's name that I was thinking of. That's a, like a new source in music. Okay. She wrote 16 Carriages for Beyonce. Wow, and wow. she wrote Lay Banks' new song, Girlfriend. Girlfriend. So her name is Tia Boggs? A- Atia, Atia, Atia Boggs. Boggs. Okay. I did not know she wrote 16 characters. Yes. Powerful young yes. lady. So Smart. look look her up and you'll see all of the. I follow a lot of <laughs> like yeah, people yeah, like that. Yeah, that's like who that. I like to follow on social media because that's who I like to stay you know connected with to see yeah. what they're up to. Like That's dope. Mm. Both of y'all performed at our holiday hangover event, um, which was a, me- a meshing of music, uh, art, comedy, podcasting, um, all under you know one roof. What were y'all thoughts going into and then what was your thoughts coming out of that event going into it i was not gonna hold you i was nervous i was so nervous that i came to visit y'all patreon just to see how y'all do it just to kind of talk to mad about the idea you know give me the idea for the poem leaving it though i felt (laughs) (laughs) leaving it 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 turned out better than i expected like i didn't know these hoes (laughs) (laughs) sick of these hoes was gonna slap how it did Mm -hmm. but that was my first time doing like a parody type of Mm -hmm. i want to get better at that but the reaction to that just boosted my confidence even more i appreciate that from you guys um, it was great though. I think you guys should do it more. But I've had people in my DMs yes. like, oh, they should do this again and yeah. so on and so forth. But coming into it, I was just like, I just wanted to honor y'all because I fuck with y'all so yeah. heavy. And I'm just like, this has to be good. Like these are my mm-hmm. friends and I want this to be great. But leaving, I had too much fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you was turning. Like, yeah. I had entirely too much fun. Like, shout out to Boogie and Hennessy and those fucking dry ice yeah. drinks. And Mishka. And they just and, found out about uh, dry like, ice and lost their minds. Yeah, hey, that I was think crazy. it was just a time, like we just had a time and we just all enjoyed each other's company. Yeah. It felt like some Harlem Renaissance shit. Like yeah. it felt yeah. like we was at a speakeasy. I think like, y'all make great hosts. Y'all like, do. It, 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 like it's natural. It was nice to see you guys not be, like you guys relax. Like you guys were so relaxed and just not, Can we be, you know. that People don't understand this shit. Like going into the show, it be like Gotta do this. Gotta get this. Gotta, gotta do it. Yeah. And, and to the point where I'm at PJP on Saturday yeah. with a cart bigger than Dan. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> pushing you, this shit you, around. You almost forget <laughs> to like have fun. Yeah. And I was telling him like I, I just one show. I just want to show up. I had fun yeah. at the Holiday Hangover. Oh, I was I, I was fried because I didn't oh realize. God. Shout out to Pure Fuel and Rhea. I didn't know that those drinks were spiked. Were spiked. Yeah. And I had like 14 <laughs> of them. Yeah. I had 18 <laughs> flaming <laughs> cocktails. <laughs> and that. Like and then once I, I said, wait, it's liquor here? They said, yeah, what did you think? I said, I thought y'all were just passing it out. 
in hindsight and like when you guys released the footage i was like oh my god ryan you were so fried like <laughs> even my performance it was just like i could tell i was fried because i was just like yeah, nah, yeah. Two, five. i was like yeah. oh my god you were so you hilarious. was heavy into your monifa up there I yeah was. you was uh, like, acting was like, like the lady on martin yeah <laughs> <laughs> Let but me I tell like you TRP another thing. Like I feel like the T- <laughs> TRPE audience is so uh, like they're objective and willing to listen. It's not like oh, yeah. entertain me, bitch. Like it wasn't like it didn't get right. that. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, that. no. The, our <laughs> uh, the, the, the dope part about our audience is that they trust us mm-hmm. and they trust us as curators. They trust trust us as tastemakers. And it's like I know people who are coming to the event like nah, I don't know, man. Like yeah. we gonna see. Like I don't know what I gotta do, but at least y'all performing at the end. I'm gonna yeah. get the rest of this shit a shot. Yeah. And they ended up loving it. And we got tons of feedback on that it's one of our most listened to episodes of the year also on our rss feed um and you know a lot of different moments came from that we cut one of steph's poems out of that it did some decent viewership same thing with yours um it was really really cool man and um we definitely want to do that format of event again just not Mm -hmm. where we got to pay for everything (laughs) since y'all all here i gotta tell you what's his name the tall one who went first how uh oh uh Leo. Killer Wordsmith. Killer Wordsmith. Killer. Yeah. So you remember, shout out Killer Wordsmith. So you remember I, I made the joke hosted that he looked like he's so wet. <laughs> so, <laughs> so everywhere he, we go, they he, always. They always <laughs> he hit me the other day. Was like, yo, I hate you forever. I'm like, what are you talking about? He was like, bro, me and my wife are on this health kick, trying to get our health in order. He's like, I go in the wild. I go to Walmart. I asked where the scales at. They take me to the digital scales. <laughs> I'm like, nah, man, for the best. <laughs> Yo, I you, was done. That Friday before, said they didn't want me to the digital scales. I'm like, nah. That Friday for the before, best. we went to Maryland. Me, Steph, and <laughs> Killer, and Killer Wordsman, we went to Maryland for a show. And the comedian Every bull comedian. went to town on him saying he looked like an ain't shit nigga, drug dealing nigga. <laughs> Yo, he was like, like killer, going. right? Yeah. <laughs> we was like, oh my God, a nigga named Killer, you've been to jail Yo. before, nigga. If he, if, <laughs> if he, if he had a Wu Tang shirt on, told you his name was Killer Don, you'd be like, all right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 What up? Yeah. 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 From the Connecticut yeah. chapter of the Killer Bees. <laughs> chapter <laughs> lead. Shout out to Killer Word. Yeah. He told me that shit about that digital scale. I was. Yeah, he, he hit me randomly the other day was just like yo i just want to say i appreciate y'all thank y'all man like y'all have no idea like you know just that appearance of being associated with y'all on that event has done a lot for me as far as in a spoken word where i'm like really like people give a fuck about what we gotta say because i'm gonna tell you what it be and i just just looking at, at that like if you're not creating your space it's very hard to just get time Mm -hmm. you know it you gotta go over it's almost like being a comedian like you gotta figure out how you can get on stage how you can do the set in the third shout out clint coley we talked about that on our show with him you know it's hard for people to just find an audience period so the fact that and that's some shit we gotta like take at times like the fact that you can get hundreds of people in a room to listen to just just about anything is like dope that's as shit because so people can't really get that all the right. time so it's like i got that same thing from him scooter ever just like yo man i really appreciate just being just being thought about yeah because yeah. there's no guarantee that you have to think about people for right. a lot of these things i always leave with saying you know thank you for considering me because there's so many people doing so many of the same things it's just like for you to look at me and say i want you on whatever i'm doing is like yeah. an honor and it doesn't matter who it is like especially for y'all it was just like y'all damn, in a space man, where like, y'all we really, so yeah so like you said we've been supporters since day one so it was just like such an honor to be able to headline your show but the truth is we lean heavily on y'all yeah. to flesh out you know the show at least from the poetry standpoint and trying to find the right counterbalance between like masculine energy feminine energy right. topical stuff not having like overlap from people and stuff like that i'm right. hitting you like yo what you think about this person right. i'm thinking about having this person on the show what you think oh yeah no y'all should definitely have t sleeves because he just did such a such, such, such. Yes. like it's like because y'all are in that world and that's just something that me and him always do is we lean on people that are experts in a particular mm. field when we're trying to you know get to the bottom of something or try to right. you know have a baseline understanding and of it unbiased and we can give honest opinion yeah and, you know and that's important because <laughs> a lot of people will sway it. Oh no, Your this is my man. People, yeah. and you know, like, yeah, like, like super duper. You can't player. be a trusted source if you're not going to tell the hundred percent raw, honest truth. Right. Like, right. So yeah, when we when we did the the idea, came up with the idea for the show. You know, we threw it out to each other. It was just like, yeah, I kind of I like, and I it it the 
thought of it came from your poets and comics where I was like, I went to Steph's event, you know, shout out black. We were sitting back there and it was just like, yo, this is a dope idea to yeah. see like poetry, comedy, poet, comic. And anybody have too much time. So you get to enjoy right. yeah. you get enough time to like laugh. Do you get enough time to like really, really, you know, yeah. back laugh? I'm like, <laughs> I, I really, hey, you laugh. I'm, 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 <laughs> because I'm just thinking about when we were at Steph's show it, when she headlined it, uh, Voices of Power. Power and Matt was like in his whole poetry bag and he's like, this is new to me, but <laughs> yeah, like, I, I was enjoying it. Like, I'm going I'm to keep it a buck with you. Being as though I never was able to write, seeing someone get up there where there ain't no, ain't no DJ. Right. Khaled ain't coming through them doors. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like somebody who's a stand-up comic. That's yeah. why it goes hand in you hand. Where it's like, room it's me and a microphone versus y'all. Right. That is a real skill. Yeah. And we do what we do as far as the podcast, doing it live, where it's like our live shows are hilarious. They're Absolutely. some of our best yeah. shows because we, we be fried and we just, you know, kind of <laughs> go off the rails. Right. But at the same time, being able to get on there, remembering everything, getting the crowd to engage with you, knowing when to hold for a second to let the crowd really, really right. go off and really feed off of that energy. It's a it's a true talent. And I, I just I enjoy it. And I know people look at me and think, what well, you like sport was just like, no, I really it's it's dope to me. Believe it's it or not, like when that gun violence poem went and after me kept posted, I was having rappers in my DM like, no, we listen to poetry to keep our shit fresh. And it was right. people that I guess had these, I don't really know a lot of yeah, city yeah, yeah. rap. I'll probably <laughs> show y'all and y'all know, yeah. but they were like people that had like a lot of following. I'm like, but oh, people shit. forget that rap and poetry still rap, go hand rap. in hand. Like, when you look, when you have rhythm and poetry. That's yeah, and when you look at Tupac was a poetry writer. Yeah. You look at Kendrick, Kendrick Lamar and what Wale, he's done. Yeah. You know, Wale, yeah. it's, it's a lot of that that goes... Hand in hand. So it's like, yeah, it makes all the sense in the world. But I was thoroughly, I thoroughly enjoyed the way the event went off. Yes. The aesthetic of it, the art, the, that bully, everything yeah, it about it. It was such an intimate experience, too. Yeah, like, and, 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 like and you need those sometimes. It almost felt like a tiny desk. Yeah. In a, in a weird That's way. another goal of mine. To do a tiny, tiny desk. desk. What is the young lady? She just was nominated for a Grammy with, in that whole category with J. Ivy. I can't uh, think of her Queen name. Sheba? Not Queen Sheba, the other young lady. Oh, Asia Monet. Asia Monet. She has a tiny desk. And I, that was the first time I seen a poet do a, do a tiny desk. And I, I got to watch that. I did some research. And She's you lit. can actually, it was so good. And you can actually, like, submit for that. Like, they have, like, every year, like, they have a pocket where you can get a band together in, like, a school setting with, like, a desk and, mm. and do that. So that's showing up on my goal <laughs> to get on that tiny desk. I'm going to be on there. Like, maybe, <laughs> maybe here's a thought. This is my entrepreneur uh, promoter hat going on. Okay. Maybe we'll help come together, produce it, do it together, and shop it to them. Hey, okay. talking my language. <laughs> <laughs> Listen here. As opposed to waiting on the opportunity, let's create. Let's it. make the opportunity. Oh. I ain't mad at that. Sure. Especially with the thing on the twenty first coming. Uh, yeah, in June twenty first, uh, World Cafe Live. But I'm featuring for Henny G. Oh. <laughs> I was thinking you was my main man. Featuring for Henny G. He's Listen, actually when, released... when, when when he because I knew it was happening because I, I was <laughs> I there because I, I was there when he got there <laughs> and I I saw the saxophone case. So I'm just like, how is this going to work? And then when you came out and started to perform, he was nowhere to be found. <laughs> so I'm sitting in the back and I'm just like, where the boy with the saxophone? And then when you started to sing and he like, what? I was like, oh, oh that was smooth. <laughs> Because, listen, we had rehearsal. The week I drove up to his apartment, he was like, he lived in one of those like high-rise apartment, had like a little lounge area. And I'm like, he said, well, how do you want me to come? I said, listen, I don't want you to be seen for the first half. I kind of wanted just to be like a surprise. Right. So it's always about rehearsal, like rehearsal. Like even if you look on my page for uh, the book release, we have rehearsal. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, we want to do it this way. So when you said it on the episode, the Patreon, I laughed so hard. Cause I was like, yo, that was the point. Right, yo. <laughs> come out right. of nowhere. I lost like it. I was like, ah, I, I, I see now. That was actually. Yeah, Henny G is releasing his project. It's funny because we actually have a Can song. Can we give his real name? Um, Daryl. Daryl. <laughs> oh my God, I thought it was Daryl. He need to do a mixtape called Henny G though. Yeah. That would be hilarious. He's Really, that's the whole point of him doing the show at World Cafe. Like he's releasing a project, and we recorded a song together before the pandemic. So that okay. was in 2019, where I was supposed to do spoken word on it, but I ended up singing. Okay. So it's me and him on the cheese playing the sax. I'm singing, and it's finally coming out this year. So it's what five years in the making. Mm. <laughs> Better late than never. Better right. late than never. 
I want to talk about your whole debacle last week with South by Southwest. Yeah, I am going to tell that story. First member. I had to talk you off the ledge the other day. I I, I debated whether I wanted to speak on this, but I know that anybody, whatever entertainment, anything you're going for, there's going to be lessons and L's that you got to take, right? So leading up to the week of South by Southwest, it's just with so many nuances happening. But to me, I'm like one of them people with grit. I was like telling myself, I'm like, J. Cole won't be in the audience. So like, you got to figure out. Right, right, right. The day of. Come on, we're going to Africa. (laughs) (laughs) The day of the show, um, I'm driving to the airport. I mean, not day of the show, the day before. I'm driving to the airport. My car died in Chester. I said, the fuck like my i've never had anything wrong with my battery i just got out left my car in chester and uber to oh, the airport was grand theft, i was yeah. like listen like yeah. fuck it it's like it's, it's no reason all of this shit's happening this week i you know first plane ride there um something was going on with the weather in dallas which is the airport i had to go through in order to get to austin mm-hmm. um they canceled three flights back to back and the next available flight was the next day around like 12 o'clock um to where i would have been getting it was like I would have been getting to Dallas at like four. I had to be on stage by seven. So I'm exhausting all possibilities. I'm hitting young Bob who was out there on his birthday with his girl to come see me. So I just like to put that out there. That's why I said young Bob is like a, a G, but, um, um, he's like, if you can get to San Antonio, it's not ideal, but I'll drive up there to go get you. Cause it's an hour away. I, no flight was going to San Antonio. At that point I started crying in the airport. I'm like, fuck, I'm about to lose this biggest opportunity in my life. Cause of the shit. Long story short, though, um, I want I had to come back home or whatever the case may be. Um, and it was like one of them things, like for a couple of days, I had to like just sit there. I mean, like just so we know, South by Southwest still paid me. So it is. But it was one of them <laughs> things. <laughs> oh, it's in there. They can't, they can't reverse the ACH, can they? <laughs> On the plane ride home, like I had a, um, actually had, um, shout out to Lene. She called me and said, I know you're not going to want to hear this, but sis, like, honestly, that had to happen. Like God was protecting you from something bigger. What if you would have got on stage and fell? What if like so much was happening and telling you not to go there? So I tried to convince myself that if I would have went there, something crazier would have happened. Right. And Don't then when I got back, you know, that's when I had to offer, like literally came back to offer for me to uh, go to the school with the kids. And then, you know, Queen Sheba, who I was supposed to perform for her in March, but, you know, she had the grant. She was not nominated for a Grammy and now she's on tour. She reached out again to confirm that I'll be with her in, in the summer. And I'm like, damn, I could sit here and dwell on this one experience or know that I got to, you know, I'm still going to keep going. Got to so. KIM, keep it moving. Keep it moving. Don't but that shit hurt. I ain't going <laughs> to yeah. yeah, delays never mean denied. Yeah, that's what it is. And I'll be back. And trust your direction all the time. It's the spook. What you said? <laughs> delays never mean you're denied, and you got trust your redirection all the time. No, oh, that's real. And I, Steph hit me, and we, I we was we, crying. We, yeah, I'm just like, yo, I'm in the gym, man. <laughs> <laughs> you sitting there like the like the monkey on the phone. <laughs> he don't know what to say. <laughs> No, I'm coming. I'm coming. Hold me down. I don't know what I thought she was. I knew you was gonna say something to make me laugh, and then I get and over we start, it. And, and, I, and I, I had to tell her, I'm like, listen, man. I know it from just the years. We seven years in with this podcast. How many things have gone right? From shit we, if we got a hundred things, it's, it's been like three few. things that have gone the right. The way. last year straight, nothing's gone right. Nothing, nothing. nothing. That's that one the, thing. But, but that's the journey, right? And I think it was important for me to say this because y'all do hear me get a lot of W's. Y'all see the viral. Like, you know, y'all yeah. heard me promote a lot. But a lot of times, you know, for everything I do promote, I take probably three or four L's behind closed doors. So I do think that any person, whether you're a poet, podcast, anything, you're going to have to take a lot of uh, fail forward in order to make and, it. And it's so funny because I, I remember a girl had told me she was like one of her friends or something was like, I, I used to really like TRP, but it's like. It, they, they 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 complain and i'm like no we don't complain this is the realest podcast ever so Girl. the same way we talk about when chad is partying in fucking bora bora or i'm partying in dubai or he's Yo, buying a new phone or i'm mm-hmm. buying a fucking phone or we're sitting courtside it's like we got to tell you about when our deal shit not working yeah. or when the venue bu- janked real. us on some bullshit or when the shit didn't sell out like that's Girl. the that's journey that's real life Girl. instagram is curated people to only think in 
highlight mode. Which is yeah. why they quit as soon as they get any type of <clears throat> yep. any type of pushback. Yeah. That's why you look at somebody page, they was doing credit repair, they was babysitting, <laughs> yeah. they was Baby sell, they was selling <laughs> loud. I'm 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 painting window panes like I'm painting window panes. People don't want to get the scars, God. man. Yeah, like true. the scars is what tell the story. The scars Real is talk. the story. Yeah. Look at me. Listen, don't be taking no <laughs> shit. And, and the thing on about on, on, the, on, on the party line, no, the scars is the scars. Yeah. <laughs> and, the, and the thing about life yeah. is, you know, when you are truly resilient and you're trying to achieve something, you got to be willing to take your L's with the same amount of grace that you take your W's oh, yeah. with. Grace. I say it all the time. But I let Chad rock off when he was like SSSW, and I was like, yeah, go ahead. I mean, <laughs> you got paid by something. Yeah. Hey, man, yeah. you on a flyer. And I still got that. So, yeah. No, I perform that fast. <laughs> Oh, yeah. y'all ain't see me? Y'all ain't even see me? Yeah. Yeah. You, you must have been at the bar. Yeah. Yeah. You went to the bathroom. Nah, man, that's, that's shit real. I was telling oh, my homie, I'm like, oh, you watch Sports Center and they'll show you Aunt Edwards dunking on somebody. Then they'll show you Aunt Edwards going baseline for a putback dunk. Then they'll show you Aunt Edwards pulling up a three. And then you look at the final score and it's like Celtics 114, Timberwolves 101. You're like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> so that's yeah, how that's Instagram true. has made and I, I've said it when you there are certain people I see on Instagram where it's just like yo it's never a bad day it's never yeah. a confusing day it's yeah. never a upside down and I'm just like there's that's no way life. that's it's life it's not, not life it's impossible it's for life. that to be life and we've just gotten to a place and and you know it's one of the Jones where we don't even talk about it a lot we don't even really we never really sat and was like this is gonna be the premise of it but it's just we talk about our lives. Mm-hmm. This is what's going on. Mm-hmm. I said last week, I'm like, this shit has been kind of all over the place for me the last couple months. So many people reached out to yeah. me. Literally. Shout out to Alicia Roebuck. Shout out to Anwar. Shout out to uh, shit, C-Tez. Shout out, it's so many. Kimba. So many motherfuckers just started hitting me up. Just like, you hit me up. Yeah, Kira hit me up. Just like, it, yo, yeah. you like, because you know, we I, joke and play all yeah, day, but yeah, it's just yeah. like, yo, you you all right? And so it's just like, like, it's okay to not be okay. Like, yeah. we're just going through that right. whole motion, you know? Dog. And that's one thing I've kind of gotten from like the spoken word poetry, where it's just like, you hear these, these like, removing of like the veils from people life, sort of like what you alluded to at the beginning. It's just like, that's some real shit. Mm-hmm. So like your Mason and the, the, the grasshoppers in a Mason jar, like that's some real shit. That's mm-hmm. a real live poem. You hear these things and it's just like, yo, this ain't, you know, Cassidy with the fajita, you know what I'm saying? For the 90,000 times, like this is real shit. Right. So it's just like, yeah, like one thing I've just, and that's the point I was trying to hammer home with you telling the story. It's like, yo, just cause it don't go your way today, don't mean that it's over. Like, Real talk. You'll look up in two, three days, and that. you got an offer to do this, an offer to be on this, that, what, and that's literally what that's happened. literally what happened. And it's just like, yo, you gotta keep moving. Feel the feel we literally tried to do a fucking uh, brunch last year, and that shit failed me. We lost bread. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They was literally like, yeah, this is how much it's going to cost to do it. This is how much you're going to lose if you cancel it. We just like, so it's a, it's a loss. It's either it's a double <laughs> loss. It's a loss. Either it's a way. loss either way. And then in us losing that, we wound up doing the show with y'all. And look at every, look at like how you say killer words. And it's just sometimes the blessing don't even be for you. It'd be for other people. Other people. Real talk. Mm -hmm. You just the, you the vessel for the blessing and don't even know it because you got some old other shit coming down the line. It's just, you just got to keep going. That's the biggest thing. Yes. So yeah, I you know I, I felt for you in that moment. I'm just like, yo, sis, is all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Two days, but it was about Monday or Tuesday. I was like, all right, it's over, whatever. By the time, I, yeah, I, I, I had to, I had to fill the fills though, because I, you know, I that's was, natural. So like, There's yeah. nothing wrong with it. Yeah. Very natural. Yeah. I, was, I remember some guy at the airport just gave me just the bartender gave me a bowl of like, <laughs> just like yeah, <laughs> I said, that was the biggest. <laughs> I was like, what the? Gave hell? you a, 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 a gave you a goblet. <laughs> Yo, the yeah, express the express of martini was the most. I was like, I was I was like, like see, you see a picture of that you posted it. That was a big ass martini. That's like one of them South he Beach express of martini. Take it. I don't know what's wrong, but go ahead. It's sugar, yeah. sugar factor. <laughs> <laughs> it was. He was like, pour it all here. Wait, wait, wait. Remember the airplane? Like, I don't know what's going on. Just, That's literally yeah. just down I'm this. Also embarrassed, but whatever. Yeah, no, nah, but you got to go through that though. You yes. know what I'm saying? Because it makes it makes the journey that much more fun. Especially you know, when, when you, you get there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's no success story without a struggle story attached to it. Hell, uh, unless you like a Rothschild or something, then, you yeah, know, that's a whole yeah, different... You're one of the Waltons. Hey, <laughs> it's you know, just great all the time. Just what yeah, it is. 
Well, you got anything else you want to do? No, nah, I got nothing. What I want to I do, what I do want to ask y'all before we wrap up and, and get y'all out of here is, uh, what do y'all both have coming up in the immediate future? Things that y'all are excited about, things that y'all want to do. We already talked about, you know, Tiny Dust. I'm already on that. We producing that. We're going to get that together immediately and, mm-hmm. and make that happen for you. Uh, but any anything, you know, that's coming up in the next, you know, month, two months, three months, end of the year, you know, long term stuff, whatever, whatever y'all want to uh, let the audience know to look out for. Friday, I'll be at the Brooklyn Art Cave in Brooklyn, New York. Nice, nice, for, nice. Um, Women's History Month. Um, shout out to J Rose and the Rose Garden Events. Um, book me for that. So it's going to be like a visual art representation for all visual arts. So Fire. Four performers, and then it's a lot of artistry going on. People are selling their art. So it's going to be like a really good time. I got a good group of Philly folks coming out there with me. So that's a blessing. Um, June 21st. Me and Daryl, yo, <laughs> Daryl Burton, um, we are going to be at World Cafe Live, so I'm looking forward to that. It's a full set of poetry and R and B with a live band. So yeah, we'll be there. Yeah. <laughs> For me, April, I got like I got four more Man Up Schools, which is the uh, Man Up program, which is the trying to get the kids off the street with that. Um, Queen Sheba, I'm waiting for her to lock. She's a nom- uh, Grammy nominated artist. I'm waiting for her to lock in a date for me to perform in Atlanta for the first time. Mm-hmm. Um, other than that, April, I, I, I'm only looking at the second quarter. I can't even get past June. Gotcha. Right now. That's, <laughs> yeah. how I, that's how I feel like it. Yeah, June it's just is like, like those the, the And I two. think that's a good way to look at, you know, at this point, it's like, I, I got to look at everything in quarters. Yeah, like, or, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I got to look at everything in quarters and quadrants or whatever. Like, all right, cool. Uh, January through March, what we doing? April yeah. through June, what we doing? Yes, we'll I can't even look at that. We'll deal with everything like, else other than that. But, but y'all being podcast. here today actually gave me another idea in addition to producing your tiny desk. I'm going to keep saying that because this is proof that I'm doing this. Yeah. If you do it without Small me, we'll be. Yeah, 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 exactly. So I'm time stamping. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm time stamping this. But aside from that, I think we should do the next holiday hangover um, uh, Memorial Day weekend. Okay. I got a venue for it. Okay, yeah. Okay, so I, I think fun. we should do that. So, Maybe that Sunday or whatever. Like no a school Monday. Yeah, yeah no, no school, school Monday, Monday, day party type thing. Mm. I think it'd be cool to do it then. Yo, I know this is going to sound so <laughs> good. I'm listening. I'm like, well, that ain't Christmas. Christmas is December. But then I'm like, holiday. holiday. Or, but you can do it for any, any holiday. holiday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Because yeah, I was just like, nah, it's a little early for Christmas. You need on the grill hangover. Yeah. <laughs> No, that's definitely. What do you say? Come to me, you're a little late for the Christmas magic. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up. I was you know, like, I'm hey. speaking into existence. Y'all doing something on this album, upcoming album. It will be. Absolutely. You already know I'm helping you, uh, you know, behind the scenes, structurally, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. So Chad, it's whatever. Listen, Can't wait. Chad is really like Y'all gonna get some a years. scholar, but he's like the man with the fucking plan. Like, that's why I'm like, This so is how you break, really spring do. your eggs and all of the Oh, no diddy. <laughs> 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 You get what I mean. Chance put his eggs in different baskets. I was just And I just earnestly, oh, um, I just in addition I'm to not Philly, right? it's so ridiculous. And I just earnestly enjoyed the helping part of it and assisting yeah. and you know helping people uh, like kind of cut through the you know the muck or whatever and figure out like all right, what's the heart of this idea yeah. and how do we beef that up? Right. Uh, no diddy and make that <laughs> um you know and, and make that a focal point and help you create the the, the vision that you're trying to create <laughs> i feel like we're silly as shit <laughs> it's extra funny because his house got the raided funniest, today i know like, <laughs> literally said, before walking the funniest in. shit about any of the paul's no diddy shit is this you don't even think of it until so you sorry. hear the part you yes. like ah oh, uh, you go away. yeah like, wow that was out of pocket yeah yeah <laughs> my man was that was, <laughs> it was a taco truck out, out there the work site we was at he went to the taco truck he was like I don't know how why they jammed so much beef in this show <laughs> <laughs> the boy just looked at he's like pause all that I'm just saying like it's a big ass taco <laughs> My that goodness. Oh, man. That was like, oh, man, that is hilarious. Oh my God. But yeah, man, I, I I've had a ball doing this I today. Appreciate you, guys you know, for y'all are like family, so absolutely. Thank y'all so much I'm just excited. for I considering and having us here. Like yes. we love y'all to death, man. We, we love y'all too. Y'all. Uh, get, a fly ass. So what time we gotta leave? 
Uh, I'd order some food. Right? <laughs> uh, <to> <laughs> <laughs> Yo, pull up, baby. We down there. <laughs> so, um, give everybody all social media where they can find y'all. Y'all got websites where they can buy y'all event tickets, all of yes, that stuff. Because um, our audience likes to support. Instagram is I am Raya I A M R Y A. The website is www.riabpoetry. That's R Y A B Poetry. Hope you know how to say that. Dot net. Um, Twitter. I mean. That's for shenanigans. So I'll <laughs> <laughs> like, I like to keep skip like, over that. Like, keep over that. But yes, the website, my book link is on there. Situations Volume Two is available for purchase. Well, you can find a link in my bio on Instagram or visit the website. But all of that is linked in my link in my bio. Nice. As well. I'm Steph Ox, so you can find me at Foxy Oxy. That's P H, like in Philly, O X Y, O X Y. Um, my first single will be dropping Poetry Month. All I ask is that y'all listen and give me the streams, because that's what I'm going to get. Period. Yeah, and when is Poetry Month? Is next month, right? It's April. 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 Next month, oh, next week. Yeah, starts uh, starts April. next Monday. Yep, oh next yeah, month. we do have something coming up. Oh, so Temple Theaters they're releasing something for Poetry Month that cool. Steph and I are both featured on. We didn't even mention it. But we just recorded. She's like, wait, I'm like, oh, no, <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. We just recorded. I was just at PC. I was like, damn, I thought I had nothing else to do. I'm like, shit. Temple Theater, shout out to Sabria. Yes, um, Sabria. She works with Temple Theaters and they did like a poetry history but it was like black women and erotic poetry it was like a theme like that so we had to record so basically it's like a lot of recording so it was like, i'm so oh. scared to see how that go because i've never <laughs> done erotica like i'm like i don't got no I sex i was do, sitting I here like I, super, I didn't go super erotic i okay. feel like my erotic is for the books like i'll put my erotic poetry in the book hey, so i'm like i'm like oh i hope i don't sound like a whole oh, 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 we shall see but she said it's gonna be like 15 minutes in a mixture of everybody's stuff in there so we'll see yeah that is coming out in april i freak we forgot about that yes no that's fly as all hell um oh y'all bought our tickets already to the show we got a show coming up yes we do yeah april 27 three i don't even know who coming (laughs) y'all said seven (laughs) dollars i missed them seven (laughs) dollars they They went in like seconds like people bought them joining yeah saturday april 27th trpe live at noto for our seventh anniversary show our anniversary is actually in january we pushed it back we want the weather to break because everybody had a brutal ass winter i'm like ain't nobody coming out if we do the show in january somebody the other day was like yo if it get cold one more time I'm putting the tree up <laughs> so yeah I, I wanted to steer clear this winter let's get into April so we're going to do our anniversary show in April um we also are going to be hosting a panel discussion at the seat oh, at the wow. table yeah, um right. Sunday the April 21st at the Fittler Club oh, nice. um friends of Morgan Cephas Chelsea Cox they all put that together I'm on the planning committee now for mm-hmm. seat at the table so I came up with it. We got a super dope panel discussion. I can't announce who's a part of it yet, but it's like some big wigs in hey, Philadelphia. Just, it's going to be fire. Just know we went at PNC. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> ah, yeah, we be there. Like, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, no, shout out to the Cephas clan, man. They always show love and look out for And us. they have their tickets for April 27th also. Yeah, of course. Yeah, we all listen with the quickness. Yeah, no, it's gonna, like, it's yeah, gonna yeah, be. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to click this link. This is not working. Yeah, like I don't want it to sell it's, out. It's gonna be a fun time. If you were at the last one at Noto, it was fun as we had a ball. Yes. I got that video of us going crazy with Meek. Still, it's hilarious as a winner. First of all, you tell some. Look at the shoes. Yeah, look at the shoes. <laughs> look at the shoes. The um, but yeah, we got hookah. That's yeah, hookah okay. soundtrack by DJ Blair, one of my favorite yeah. DJs that I haven't been able to work with on the TRP note yet. Mm-hmm. But we got DJ Blair. All of the you know the visual uh, installation is going to be done by Raj Christmas RC Graphics, our brother who does all of our images mm-hmm. and all of that stuff. Uh, Dan's going to be handling the video. He's going to have his own hookah. It's going down. <laughs> it's it's going. It's going to be one of them ones you do not want to miss this event. We're already like thirty percent sold out in like three four days. So. You're going to F around and find out. Don't be one of them people. Buy your tickets. Straight mm. up, man. I got nothing else. We appreciate you guys. Appreciate Love y'all. y'all. Thank y'all man. so much for joining us today. We are out.